Hello everyone, welcome to Venkarna English Guru. A very good evening or uh, good morning or good afternoon to the people who have been att attending the class all over the world. Yes, friends. Yeah, good evening, good evening, guys. We'll be starting our class in a minute. Okay. Let's wait for uh, our students. Yeah. A very good evening. After a long time, Mohan. Yes. Yeah, good evening, Prasad. Friends, we are actually talking about history of English literature. As a part of history of English literature, uh, where we are actually in the middle, at the end of uh, Renaissance, which is actually subdivided into four important periods, Elizabethan age, Jacobian age, Carolyn age, and Commonwealth period. And uh, yesterday we were on the, and uh, we were able to close our class very early due to the electrical interference and by only you can watch my previous class for just for 35 minutes 9 to 945 935 or 932 like okay and uh, afterwards everything is blur and uh, and ev every point we had a discussion with regard to that and before we go into the topic let me ask a few questions Okay. Yes, friends. During the Carolan age, uh, there were two important groups: supporters of the king, supporters of the parliament. Support supporters of the king were actually called. What is the name? Supporters of the king were actually called. Yes, happy Moharam, happy Varlakshmi Vratam also, and uh, to women and to all my Muslim friends, happy Moharam, guys. Yes. Yeah. The supporters of the king, they were actually called and uh, what? Cavaliers. Or else you can say, yes, Cavaliers. And supporters of the parliament, uh, they were actually called roundheads. Already it is there, my friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cavaliers, yes. Sir John Suckling, Robert Herrick, Andrew Morwell, Edmund Waller, and Francis Corliss, Thomas Carey, all these are dash poets. I repeat, Sir John Suckling, Richard Lawless, and uh, all those important uh, writers are actually called dash writers. Yes, come on friends, who will see the answers? No, not pretends. And what do you call them? Sir John Suckling, Richard Lawless, Robert Herrick, Edmund Waller and Francis Quarles. Yes, yes, Samulata Madam, wonderful. And Cavalier poets. Cavalier poets, who are also called Carolyn poets, they were actually the followers of Dash writer. Yes, friends, who will answer my question? Cavalier poets or Carolyn poets, they were actually the supporters of, uh, they were actually the followers they usually wrote a lot of literature to support the king. They were actually called Dash, yes, Ben Johnson, not John Dunn, Ben Johnson, wonderful. That is why they are called sons of Ben or, or you can say uh, uh, tribes of Ben, Ben Johnson. Friends, as, as I told you, during this period, John Milton started his writing and he composed two important poems like Allegro Il Pensoroso. Allegro and Il Pensoroso. They were, these two are actually called dash poems. What, there is a specific phrase I told you. And what is the phrase that we can associate with the works Allegro and Il Pensoroso? Yes, friends, who will answer this question? Quick, my friends. I want to, you to give a very quick answer. Yes, companion poems, wonderful, wonderful Nagabhavani, madam, wonderful Kavita, madam, yes, companion poems. And 
John Milton composed a popular pastoral elegy. Okay, popular pastoral elegy that is Lycidas. And this is written on the death of one of his close friends. And what was his name? Yes, who will answer this question? And Lycidas, which is actually composed by and John Milton on the death of Dash. Yes, good evening, uh, Surendra. Edward the King, wonderful, wonderful. Edward the King, yes, this is very important. Puritans closed the theatres. Puritans are the supporters of the parliament, supporters of the, supporters of the parliament, supporters of Oliver Cromwell. They closed the theatres in Dash year. Come on, friends, can somebody answer these questions? Puritans closed the theatres in Dash. Dash year. Come on, friends. You need to answer no. Yes, yes, Kavita, madam. Yes, Nagabhavan, madam. It is 1642. They closed the theatres. Yes, it's wonderful, wonderful, my friends. Wonderful. Yes. So, and we were on at the last. Yes, you've been and uh, we'll we'll have a separate session. The whole session about only examination kind of point of discussion. Okay, it's it's enough. Thank you all for active participation. First, give me a clarity. Is my voice audible and is the board visible? If yes, show me thumbs up. Show me thumbs up, quick. Quick, my friends. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Prasad. Thank you. So friends, let us have a kind of recapitulation of what I taught you and yesterday. So as I told you, Carolina, age 16, 25 to 49, it's the age of English civil war, fought between supporters of the king, supporters of the parliament, and cavaliers and round heads. Public theatres were closed during this period. And at the same time, and John Milton began his writing, the greatest religious poet was George Herbert, Robert Burton, Sir Thomas Brown, some more. Next, uh, during this period, you, you could find the popular poets like uh, the cavalier poets, Sons of Ben, Tribes of Ben. These are the followers of Ben Johnson. Next, uh, they wrote a lot of literature about the court and uh, polish lyrics of court gallantry supported the supported the king supported supported the activities of the charles one and to glorify the activities of uh, charles one who are the writers sir john suckling richard lawless robert Hedrick, edmund Weiler, and francis quarles and thomas carey the popular writers and the popular were richard lawless and sir john suckling two are very important one next uh, where we discussed important dates my friends as i told you and the first word you can remember, which is written by Ben Johnson, to the immortal memory and friendship of the noble pair, Sir Lucius Carey, Sir Richard Morris, and written by Ben Johnson. And this is considered to be the first greatest regular ode, composed based on the uh, styles of Pindar. Next, uh, the other Bacon's essays, you know. And I'm also going to give you a short summary of this Bacon's essays at the end. Next, Ode to Shakespeare, written in 1629, and second full edition of Shakespeare, 1632. And The Temple, a collection of religious lyrics, 33. Lycidas, John Milton's pastoral elegy. Puritans closed theatres in 1642, commonly asked bits. Allegro il Fenceresso, companion poems, commonly asked in different competitive examinations with regard to uh, English literature. Allegro il Fenceresso, and a mask, Camo. Camo is a popular mask, a court entertainment, which is specifically written by John Milton in 1634 and Lysidas. Areopistica, here we and we were able to stop. This is very important, my friends. Areopistica, Areopistica, and this, this is actually about freedom of speech. This is about freedom of speech. So at the time, the power was in the control of the Catholicism, Anglicanism. And the Puritans, the common people, they protested for their own autonomy and freedom. And they supported parliament, they supported their common rights. And John Milton, and he was one of the Protestants during his early stages. And when he was below 30, below 40, below 50, he had a lot of ideas about Protestantism, Puritanism. To support that, he wrote one of the popular prose writings, prose essay, Areopistica. And this is... It's a pamphlet, it's an essay. This is written about the freedom of speech. 
it is just like uh, emergency what what actually happened during emergency in india in the same way and uh, the emergency the civil war was actually going on and the peak stage where puritans closed the theaters in 1642 and nothing is available to the common people and to talk about the freedom to talk about the freedom of speech press and john milton composed this eriopistica several times this bit featured in the history of net the end of civil war 1648 the civil war ended the public theaters were closed again in 1648 but first they were closed only you can remember the date 1642 this is the date where all public theaters were closed and public theaters were opened in 1660 first closed 1642 and again opened in 1660 so almost 18 years they were closed and 1649 and puritans protestants they were uncontrollable uncontrollable they were not able to accept that and problems that are created created by charles the one and their patience degraded and killed the catholic king and the charles the one the execution of charles one and where charles one was beheaded and he was his head was removed and he was killed by the common people and by the protestants by the puritan uh, by the puritan uh, and uh, puritans under the leadership of oliver cromwell so by that the carolan age is over so this is what i thought of talking about my friends and now we'll be talking about a wonderful age that is the commonwealth period okay and the major important concept major important concept that we are talking about is the commonwealth age which is also called the puritan interregnum okay and the puritan age puritan protestants they wanted to create a kind of democracy okay kind of secular kind of uh, the world but which was not possible but they had only little time like 1650 to 58 so what actually happened during this period and uh, what are the political events what are the popular books we will be talking about in this discussion yes friends the commonwealth period which is also called the puritan interregnum or puritan is simply the period from 1649 to 1660 this is called the puritan interregnum or the commonwealth age commonwealth which means where the government where the country is where the nation is controlled by someone who is elected by the by the common people where power is in the hands of the common people power is in the hands of the parliament not in the hands of the church not in the hands of the king that is the greatest of this period but the power was only in the hands of the common people very little time 49 to 1660 but again and after 1660 again power goes to the hands of the king because people were not able to control so excess of freedom is always dangerous you know so people had a lot of freedom individuality that led to again destruction and what actually happened in destruction we'll talk a little later so see friends so puritan interregnum which is also called the commonwealth period the period from 1649 to 1660 1649 to 1660 which you can say the end of renaissance the commonwealth period which is also called puritan interregnum it extends from the end of civil war and the execution of charles one in 1649 to the restoration of stuart monarchy under charles the 2 charles the 2 who becomes a leader in 1660 so the period from the period after the execution of charles 1 to the reign of charles the 2 the beginning of the reign of charles the 2 that period which you can say the commonwealth age the commonwealth period in this period england was ruled by the parliament that's what i've been talking about power and uh, was in the hands of the parliament parliament and where there is a place for everyone where there is there was a democracy that's what puritan interregnum commonwealth the kind of commonwealth where where the leaders of the parliament were elected by the elected by the common people and where power was not in the hands of and the parliament was not under the control of the church or the king or the anglican church or the catholicism no it was in the hands of and the true fruits of renaissance and became a kind of reality during this period but the problem was they were not able to continue the fruits 
that's a major problem for the puritans or protestants or the parliament in this period england was ruled by the parliament under the puritan leader the great, the great leader of the puritan oliver cromwell Oliver Cromwell. So we need to understand during this period how the Catholics they converted themselves into Protestants or Puritans. And that there was no Catholicism. And because as the king was killed and there was no priority to the king, no importance to the church, no importance to the Bible, the power was in the hands of the parliament and the common people who are elected by the people, elected by the common people. So and under the leadership Oliver Cromwell. His death in 1658, but unfortunately died in 1658. So he was able to control, rule the, rule the country just for eight years, from 1650 to 58. But after 1658, what happened? And nobody was ready to take over, to take the responsibility of the parliament. Hence, the intellectuals, the philosophers, the educationists, the socialists of UK, again, they had to request the son of Charles I, Charles II, again, to come forward and take the throne. Okay. And he comes back, Charles II, and who fled to other parts of the world. And he comes back and takes, takes the throne in 1660. And from that period, again, there was again monastery. There was again aristocracy. Again, the power was in the hands of the king or the power was in the hands of the church. So, so his death in 1658 marked the dissolution of the commonwealth, dissolution of the parliament. That's what. Next. So this is a few important points with regard to. And the drama almost disappeared. So as theatres, theatres were closed in 1642, 42 to 1660, no public theatres. So when there are no public theatres, what will be and who are going to lose the dramatist, the playwrights of the time? That is why you don't find much drama and after and during after 1630 to 1660. You could find only poetry. That's for metaphysical poetry and Kabila poetry, not significant kind of drama which is popular popularly composed during 1630 to 1660. So, drama almost disappeared for 18 years. 18 years, you see. So, 1642 to 1660. Theatres were closed in 1642 and they were opened again in 1660. No play. And the Puritans closed the theatres in September 1642 and the theatres were opened in again 1660. And this is the age of Milton's political pamphlets, as we've been talking about, and Eripichtika. Or he talks about a lot against the king, against the laws. Personally, he was affected by the court, by the church, who John Milton. Hence, he composed a lot of literature, a lot of pamphlets against the king. Against, against the king, about the marriage system, about various, about freedom of speech, freedom of uh, uh, one's individuality, and companion poems, as I spoke about previously. Allegro il Pansarasso. And, and one of the major important texts during this period was and Hobbes, Thomas Hobbes, political treatise Leviathan. Friends, this Leviathan is a popular book which is written by Thomas Hobbes, where he expected a democratic kind of world, like a, a kind of utopian world where people have secular, secular and democratic kind of world with the establishment of the parliament. But what happened? But the wishes of Thomas Hobbes vanished, vanished based on and by the death of uh, Oliver Cromwell. That's what it, and he imagines, he imagined in, this, this is a popular book which is written in 1650s and where he expected where the common people had a, have a lot of individuality and they will have a lot of freedom and, and wonderful lifestyle and that he expected secular democratic kind of life and that people are going to, the people of UK were going to have, that was the Assumption of Thomas Hobbes in the book, but that becomes that became a kind of uh, uh, impossibility or, or a kind of imagination. So Leviathan, it's a popular book composed in 1651. Remember all of them. Next, the prose writers. Who are the popular prose writers? Who are the popular prose writers of the time? Sir Thomas Brown, and like Thomas Fuller, Jeremy Taylor, Isaac Walton. So sometimes you will also get a bit 
who of the following is a jacobian poet or puritan leader puritan writer like that also you will get a bit be ready and the poets henry vaughan edmund waller abram cowley and sir william devnant and andrew marvel very very important we we have gone through andrew marvel was a popular cavalier poet during the carolingian age but in this period he becomes a puritan see that's what you, you could find a lot of political leaders and they stay in one political party for some time for their own benefits again they change something so andrew marvel was one of one of uh, one of the poets like who changed his mindset to from catholics to puritan aspects friends you need to remember this and try to share our channel to your friends and classmates and well wishers don't forget next what are the popular dates of this important dates with regard to the puritan or the commonwealth age 1649 to 1660 the puritan age or the commonwealth age which you can say 1649 to his coy mistress very very important uh, poem which is written by andrew marvel in the net examination there was a bit in the poem to his coy mistress coy refers to there was a bit coy refers to shyness shy coy refers to shy sometimes there were bits based on the terms based on the meanings what is the meaning of coy and uh, it it was uh, it was given in the history of net examination couple of times next which is a popular poem written by andrew marvel 1649 a, another one, the first oration ode in english literature an oration ode upon cromwell's return from ireland an oration ode upon cromwell's return from ireland friends i spoke about odes that were actually categorized into three types a regular ode irregular ode oration ode and this is the first oration ode in english literature written by andrew marvel to glorify oliver to glorify the puritan leader oliver cromwell i think i have also given you some short summary about this we'll talk about so first oration ode in english literature very 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 important an oration ode upon c and you can think of the mindset of you can think of the intellectuals and how they behaved before 1649 after the and beheading of charles the one and what was and what made andrew marvel to be the glorifier of andrew and glorifier of uh, oliver cromwell oliver cromwell who was exactly opposite to the catholicism but he turned himself and again started glorifying and uh, and um, or oliver cromwell 1650 the puritan leader oliver cromwell became the ruler of the parliament very very important 1650 and he was invited from ireland and oration over upon cromwell's return from ireland written from ireland because after beheading beheading charles i oliver cromwell and uh, ran away to ireland and the intellect puritans protestants requested him and he came back and became the ruler of the parliament okay some important dates next you can see 1651 thomas hobbes political political kind of book essay and what leviathan very 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 important this is 1651 1655 on the late massacre in pitmont it's a popular poem composed by john milton this also very important bit asked a couple of times 1658 the dissolution of the commonwealth and the parliament was dissoluted which means the end of commonwealth the end of parliament and nobody was ready after the death of oliver cromwell nobody was ready to take the charge take the leadership of the spiritual separatists 1660 end of renaissance end of the commonwealth and based on the title renaissance there was an essay in 1977 john john kelly did women have renaissance did women have individuality did women have freedom today so this is these are some of the popular important uh, some of the popular important uh, dates my friends with regard to the puritan or with regard to the commonwealth age and now i am going to give you shorts and if it is everything is okay and you are able to listen properly nothing is disturbing you show me thumbs up so that i'll go further yes yes friends show me thumbs up if if everything is nice and if you don't have any problem 
Yes. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. Yes, friends. Now, I am giving you some short, some short descriptions with regard to some few examination-oriented aspects. Some of the viewers, they asked me to describe more about inverse divots I am talking about. Okay. So, inverse divots. So, inverse divots, as I told you, who are the inverse divots? And Robert Green, John Lilly, Thomas Kidd, Thomas Nash, Thomas Lodge, George Pele. Okay. So, all these are, and Christopher Marlowe, seven. These are considered to be the university wits. They were all intellectuals. They were all the graduates, postgraduates from Oxford and Cambridge University, where they and formed a group together and they wrote literature only in blank words, only in heroic style, and they wrote a lot of dramas only in tragic, only one or two writers composed comedy. I told you all these points during my explanation to the period one Elizabethan age. I'm giving you some little bit of information, extra information to that. See, the term university wits was coined by George Saintbury. You can remember this. I did not talk about the word university wits. It is coined by George Saintsbury, Saintbury in 19th century, a journalist and author. You, you may get a bit who coined the word university wits, George Saintbury. It's a phrase used to name a group of 16th century playwrights. All these university wits, which includes only English playwrights, dramatists of 16th century. And they were dramatists and pamphleteers. Some of them also composed pamphlets like Thomas Nash and were educated at the universities, as I told you, Oxford and Cambridge universities. So these were the writers, playwrights who were educated in two universities, Oxford and Cambridge University, and they became popular secular writers. Secular, which meant they wrote literature about the principles of renaissance the concepts of renaissance like uh, talking they spoke about the ideals of renaissance like individuality freedom okay autonomy in terms of life literature thought religion etc through drama next prominent members as i told you christopher marlowe robert green thomas nash and they were from cambridge john lilly thomas lodge George Pile, they were from Oxford. Thomas Kidd was not, not included in the in the in the group, though he was not any of the ever mentioned university. He was not, he was not from any university, but he was a part of this. And these were associated with London writers and dramatists set in the stage of theatrical renaissance of Elizabethan England. Very, very important. And they were identified among the earliest professional writers in English. They were the first writers who used blank words, heroic forms, heroic styles, heroic following iambic pentameter lines without rhyme skin. They composed a lot of plays. For example, all the plays of John uh, Christopher Marlowe are composed in blank words, which means iambic pentameter lines without rhyme skin. Next, another important popular writers who composed all the plays in blank words, Shakespeare. And all these writers used blank words as a common poetic device dramatic device they were identified among the earliest prepared a way for the writings of william shakespeare and most of the writers and shakespeare and he was one of the disciples of uh, christopher marlowe took and uh, guidance from christopher marlowe and uh, christopher marlowe who died at the age of 29 in a in a in a bar or in a restaurant in a small like, quarrel where he was beaten and uh, died on the spot at the age of 29 and according to some of the researchers, had Christopher Marlowe had lived in this world and we would not have seen a prominent writer like William Shakespeare. It was a prophecy. Next. What are the major characteristics of uh, this university wits? Major popular important points we'll be talking about. You can see them. And uh, they were fond of the heroic themes. That's what I've been talking about. Heroic themes wrote about warriors, wrote about national leaders, and how epics were written based on the heroic, based on one individual who is just like a hero, a warrior to the world, like that. These are the dramatists who took up heroic themes like the lives of great figures. For example, Christopher Marlowe's Dr. Fortress, Jeeva Malta, Tamil and the Great, if you read everything, a warrior, like Muhammad, like Tamburlain, 
and this is the first one. So fondness for heroic themes. Second one, heroic themes needed heroic treatment. Heroic treatment, which means they followed great varieties, splendid descriptions, long swelling speeches, handling of violent incidents and emotions. They followed. Third, the style was also heroic. What is the style of heroic? Next, see strong and sounding lines, magnificent epithets, and powerful declamations. Popular dialects were used. Pop popular styles were used. Themes were usually tragic in nature. That's what I told you. Most of the most of the poems, most of the plays, not poems, plays that were composed by Inverse Tivits were tragedies. Only one writer, John Lilly, I think so. Lilly and who wrote some comedies. He owned, except Lilly, everybody wrote a lot of tragedies. That is the greatness. That is the one of the qualities, characteristics of University Wits. Okay, friends, this is something about with regard to University Wits and their characteristics. I think the, it's enough and so that you will have, if there is a bit about University Wits, you have to score one. Next, friends, and Leviathan, very, very important. Regarding this book, there were plenty of bits. So who is the author of Leviathan? So Leviathan by Thomas Hobbes, it is also called the matter and form and power of commonwealth and ecclesial and civil. So that this is the other title. So you may get a bit, what is the other title of uh, Leviathan you see? And the matter, form and the power of commonwealth. So remember this. Next, it's a book written by Thomas Hobbes and uh, published in 1651 revised later in Latin in 1668. Its name derives from the biblical Leviathan. So the word Leviathan is, which is actually taken from the Bible. Like the word concerns the structure of the society and legitimate government. Very, 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 very. What is Leviathan? Where the book talks about, it deals with structure of a society. What could be the exact structure of a society and legitimate government? What could be the good government? Okay, that's what this uh, book talks about Leviathan and one way it, it can also be considered utopia. So what could be an ideal government? What could be a legitimate government? What could be the structure of a society where he spoke about? Next, as one of the earliest, most influential examples of social contract theory, where he talks about what could be the responsibilities of the people living in a society and where he spoke and this is not more into a literary kind of text it's a kind of political treatise political kind of statement written during the english civil war and it argues for a social contract and ruled by an absolute sovereign so where he expected a kind of sovereignty or a kind of democr democracy a kind of liber liberty that people and should have according to thomas hobbes Hobbes wrote that civil war and the brood situation of a state of nature, the war of all against all, could be avoided only by strong, undivided government. So he expected where we should, we where he wanted wanted to have a wonderful government like this is wonderful government which is not shattered by the other other weaknesses, which means a kind of commonwealth that he expected. But what happened after the death of Puritan leader Oliver Cromwell, which created a lot of tensions too and Thomas Hobbes. Okay, so this is what something about uh, certain short summary, my friends. Remember our concept all the time. Next, Bacon's essays. Bacon's essays, some short summary I am going to give you. Not very short. Okay, friends, remember Bacon's essays. What is the full title of Bacon's essays? Essays religious meditations or places of an pervasion and dissuasion seen and allowed and first actually composed in 1597 was first published book by philosopher statement jurist francis bacon so this essays which is composed by francis bacon the father of english essays the essays were written in a wide range of styles from the plain unadorned and epigrammatic, epigram proverb, remember, epigram, which means a proverb. 
so they once you read any uh, these essays you will have a plenty you will get a lot of proverbs okay some books are to be tasted see so a wonderful one line it's a popular it will give you a lot of meaning so that kind of statements which you can say epigrammatic they cover topics drawn from both public and private life he talks about love he talks about marriage he talks about divorce he talks about society he talks about truth he talks about politics what not everything so talks about both public and private life what is very important to the people next you see and uh, the essays covered their topics systematically from a number of different angles weighing one argument against another where it this is what very important remember it here i am going to introduce a word the essays cover the topic systematically from one number from a number of different angles weighing one argument against another so the process of making for example if i am arguing something i make one statement and and again second statement is going to oppose the first statement this type of uh, uh, arguments which which require inductive reasoning and inductive reasoning or scientific reasoning or observation theory and this kind of technique of writing literature which you can say aphorism aphorism very 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 important my friends Rem remember aphorism aphoristic style net examination you have plenty of uh, previous examination examination oriented bits who is popular for the aphoristic style of writing francis bacon is known for dash style of writing aphorism aphoristic style what is aphorism the process of making one argument against the other where you talk about truth as truth where you talk about a social issue as a social issue where you talk about a religious issue as a religious issue so you are not going to you are going to make a number of contradictory statements and that will create a kind of inductive thinking inductive thinking among the people this style of writing which you can say aphorism aphoristic style which is invented by francis bacon which is very very important remember friends next while the original edition included 10 essays so how many essays were their first original 10 essays a much enlarged second edition appeared in 1612 first edition 1597 second 1632 it included 38 another under the title essays councils civil and moral was published in 1625 with 58 essays next translation into french this was translated into french italian appeared during and bacon's lifetime itself so during his time his essays were translated into french and italian next in bacon's essay of plantations mission or authority to exercise and martial law so the last two lines which are not required remember so when was it published 1597 10 and 1612 38 1628 25 58 essay this is very important finally how many essays are there in half essays published by francis bacon 58 this is very important and one of the essays of truth of studies like you have plenty okay next i am talking about short summary of an origin note upon cromwell's written from ireland written by andrew marvel what is this poem about and marvel wrote this poem to commemorate commemorate oliver cromwell's written to england oliver cromwell after killing charles i escaped to ireland next all the puritans requested oliver cromwell okay nothing is going to happen now you are going to be the king come back and take the throne and be the leader of the parliament not the throne sorry be the be the uh, leader of the parliament and requested and to praise and uh, andrew marvel composed a poem that is an oration ode usually oration odes are usually composed to describe to glorify someone remember this next written after military expedition to ireland cromwell defeated the irish catholic and english royalist alliance in a series of battles and thereby eliminating a major threat to the newly 
formed English Republican government in 1649 and 50. Marvel models his poem on the odes of Roman poet Horace. As I told you, Horatian word is actually first introduced by Horace, as I told you. So, regular word Pindar, irregular word Abram Kaule, Horatian word Horace, the popular Roman writer. So, this poem, which is actually a model taken from the Horace, who fought on the side of Roman Republicans, but eventually accepted Augustus Caesar's rule and the ensuring peace. How Horace wrote a poem to describe and the... Uh, the happenings of Augustus and Caesar and uh, during 44 BC and uh, 1 AD. Same thing he followed. And the poem is ambivalent about the rule and execution of King Charles I. And even though Marvel clearly praises Oliver Cromwell's leadership, that's what we need to understand. Andrew Marvel was a popular Catholic, praised Charles I. But suddenly after he was uh, killed, assassinated, next he starts praising Charles, praising Oliver Cromwell as if he was a wonder and praising his leadership. That's what. Okay. This is what I wanted to talk about today, my friends. By this, I can say the concept of Renaissance is over, but I'm planning to talk about a few short summaries like this. Few short summaries for two days or three days. The important summaries I'll be talking about from 1500 to 1660. How I discussed some short summaries, I'll be talking about the short summaries of uh, maybe Christopher Marlowe or Shakespeare or Ben Johnson or some of the poems like of John Dunn's Canonization or uh, The Sun Rising or maybe a few uh, summaries I'm planning to talk about maybe in the next classes. Bear with us and if you want, you can also post your doubts. You can suggest me what you actually require, the summaries. Okay, friends, this is what I wanted to talk about. And thanks for today. We will be meeting tomorrow, same time. Okay, friends. And if you get any doubts and clarifications, you can post as a part of your comments. And before that, and think about this and share with your friends, classmates about our YouTube channel and share our videos. Share our links to your friends and different WhatsApp groups and ask them to subscribe to our YouTube channel, my friends. Thank you all and we'll be meeting tomorrow.